Honor is the culture by which the kingdom functions. Kingdom dynamics, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the keys of the kingdom, kingdom laws, kingdom principles, however you want to label it. Honor is how he's a husband to the wife. Honor is how she is the light of his day. It's all about honor. And here is the enemy of honor. The enemy of honor is familiarity. Somehow honor has got to be infused and you can't just talk about it. There's got to be a people that model it. Somebody raise your hand and wave at me. If you say, I want to model it in my home, I want to model it in my workplace because honor is not something you give when they deserve it. Honor is not up Objective, it is subjective. It is not necessarily their standard. Honor is your standard. Who is it in your house that God wants to favor, but they did everything and you know all their story? I don't know, but there's somebody in your house. There's somebody in your circle. And don't let your disrespect rob you of the opportunity to draw a miracle out of them. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet gets a prophet's reward. Somebody Lift your hands for 15 seconds and shout hallelujah. Malachi chapter 1, got several others I'll read in a moment, about four more scriptures. But I want to read, a number, I know a lot of you are like, oh no, Malachi, because that's the tithe of scripture. I didn't say Malachi 3, that's chapter 3. Malachi chapter 1, nobody talks about that one, nobody reads that one. But there's some powerful things that are foundational to our faith, not just the tithing in chapter 3. There's something in chapter 1, and I want to read that. Read with me please right now. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests, now he's talking to the preachers. To you preachers who despise my name. Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but you say, in what way have we defiled you? Next verse, please. By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible and you offer the blind as a sacrifice, talking about the animal sacrifices. They're going and they're getting the sick, the worst of the animals and bringing it as a sacrifice unto God. Is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer this to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Next verse, please. Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? Now look at right here. He says, entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. He said, let me tell you what you're going to have to do to get back in the graces of God, get back in the favor of God. He said, because what you have been doing is contemptible. He says, entreat now the Lord's favor that he may be gracious to us while this is being done by your hands. Verse 10. Will he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? Who is there among you who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you. Verse 11, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hand from the rising of the sun. Woo, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same in the King James or even to its going down in you King James. My name shall be great among the Gentiles in every place incense shall be offered by my name. Lord bless the reading of your word in Jesus name and everybody said amen. All right, at this church, we talk to each other. So look at your person on the right and on the left and say, here we go, neighbor. Here we go. Here we go. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I'm about to just let this thing go. Wave at me if you want to hear everything I got. Okay, I just want to make sure. I want Because this right here this is a challenging one. The foundation that I want to lay is the foundation of honor. Honor. Honor is the culture by which the kingdom functions. 
kingdom dynamics, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the keys of the kingdom, kingdom laws, kingdom principles, however you want to label it, they cannot function outside of this atmosphere. They cannot function outside of this culture. That presents us in 2023 with a great problem because we are now in an American culture which honors and respects nothing. We don't respect anybody. We don't respect anything. And if we find a flaw in anyone, it's not a place where we want to minister. It's a place where we want to take it and use it against them. That's why nobody wants to let anybody close. Because when you get close to me, you're going to see what I don't do well. And I don't trust that you're going to take that information to be a blessing to me. I'm fearful that you're going to take that information and somehow harm me with it. Because the culture of the kingdom is honor. Honor means, you know, I, I used to tell them in the marriage conference, honor is, you know, when you honor your wife, you never lose your, we honor is how a marriage functions. <coughs> Honor is how a parent functions to their children. Honor is how he's a husband to the wife. Honor is how she is the light of his day. It's all about honor. And here is the enemy of honor. The enemy of honor is familiarity. Because when you see a person time after time and day after day and you see them outside of what they do well and outside of their gift, outside of their skill set, outside of what they bring to the table, when you see the negatives in their life, when you see what the treasure in the field, you see the field in their life, when you see the dirty things in their life, then all of a sudden we get disappointed and we lose our honor and we get familiar. This is not biblical, but they say familiarity breeds contempt. And there is truth to that. What does it mean? It means when I find the part of you that I don't like, it causes me to no longer honor you. So now we have marriages with no honor, and that is the deterioration of the marriage. We have kids that don't respect their parents. That is the deterioration of parenthood. We have now people standing in pulpits like myself who they're made fun of and they're mocked all the time and they make videos and they make mockery of them and they make light of them. And now we have guys that are powerless in pulpits because nobody honors them or the gift or the anointing of God on their life. And when you see honor go out the door, all of a sudden kingdom dynamics go out the door with it. The kingdom cannot function without a culture of honor being in a building. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of a people that can show the rest of the church and the rest of the world what honor looks like. I want to know, I want to show them what it looks like to honor and to fear God. I want to show them what it looks like to honor and what it means to reverence those who are in authority over you, to reverence and respect those who hold office, to reverence and respect those that are in uniform, to reverence and respect, come on somebody, to reverence and honor our wives in our homes and the way guys talk about girls and the way girls respond to guys. Somehow honor has got to be infused and you can't just talk about it. There's got to be a people that model it. Somebody raise your hand and wave at me. If you say, I want to model it in my home. I want to model it in my workplace. I want to model it when I'm on the streets. I want to model it when I'm in the marketplace. I want to model it when I'm in my church. I want to model it when I'm among the different races and different cultures than me. Because honor is not something you give when they deserve it. Honor is not objective. It is subjective. It is not necessarily their standard. Honor is your standard. And God will demand that you honor the unhonorable. God will demand that you respect that which is not respectable. Why? Because when you honor them, you pull something different out of them. I'm preaching right now. When you respect them, you pull something different from out from them than anybody else does. And this has got to be the culture of redemption and everything that is in your house. Why? Because I want the kingdom to come and I want his will to be done. Somebody take five seconds and shout hallelujah in this place. Come on, shout hallelujah. Woo. Woo. High five a couple of people on each side and say honor, 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 honor. 
honor. I feel something happening. I feel something stirring in this place. I feel something moving. I feel a culture being created. I feel something in the atmosphere. Lord, we honor your presence in our praise. We honor your presence in our worship. We honor God in tithe and offering, as the Lord says, with our substance. We honor, we honor, we honor, and then let your kingdom come in the midst of that honor, and let your will be done. Say amen. I got to go on. I got to go. I'm going to lay out some principles. Those of you that have been with Redemption 15, 20, 30 years, you've heard them before, but probably haven't heard them in a long time. <laughs> but a lot of Redemption now, and especially East and those virtual are new to this, and I want to Relay some foundations. Number one, you receive someone on the exact same level that you perceive them. You receive someone on the same level that you perceive them. So perception is not about them. Perception is something that is a filter inside of you. It is how you see a thing. Perspective. It's not exactly maybe what they are. It's how you perceive them. Help me. Jesus was with the woman at the well. I go back to this many times because it's the most blatant example of this principle. He could get nowhere with her. In fact, she would just kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, back and forth. Uh, uh, could I have something to drink? Uh, the well is deep. You have nothing to draw with. Basically, you, Jew, you Jews don't even have anything to do with us Samaritans till you need anything. Well, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Well, I wish you would give me this whatever water you got so I ain't got to keep coming. He just wasn't getting anywhere. Then he shifts her perception. He says, go call your husband. He moves outside of his humanity and shifts into his deity. But you are the salt of the earth, a city set on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. When you forget about trying to change everybody else, and you say, I'm going to take the word and I'm going to change my world, then your world lights up. Then when you get around everybody else and they're depressed and you're full of joy, you stick out. What's going on in front of your eyes may seem small, but God has a much bigger plan in store. In this next chapter of On Assignment, Ron Carpenter will help you discover how to see God's true plan for your life. The blessing is not on him, the blessing is on you. And if you will obey, then I'll put this thing on you, and everywhere you go, you will carry it. You will walk in with it. Every room, everybody will recognize it. Blessed shall you be. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Hello, my friends. I'm just so grateful that we have this time together with you. You said, oh, don't interrupt my word. We're going to get back to it in just a moment. But we just take a pause right here every time that we do our telecast. And we do two things. Number one, we say thank you. Uh, I have been taught to be grateful, not only by my parents who raised me, but by my God. You enter his gates with thanksgiving. You enter his courts with praise. There's no greater greeting to anyone, to God or to people, than being grateful. And I'm, thank I'm thanking you for the fact that uh, you have allowed us to do what we do, that we get to represent Jesus, the highest call in the earth, that I get to pick up a microphone and thunder the Word of God through these TV cameras into nations all over the world. And you have helped make that possible. And uh, we don't advertise the normal way and we don't pay the bills the normal way because we believe God's people love God's message so much that they believe that there are preachers that are assigned and sent 
to take this message all over the earth. That's what we endeavor to do here at Ron Carpenter Television. And I want to thank those of you who help us do what we do every week, every month, every year, every day. But I want to open our circle to some new people. I believe we are in a time of expansion. I believe we are in time of enlargement where God wants us to expand our borders, lengthen our cords, expand our tent, and enlarge our territory. I believe we are in that season, and I believe that we need to open our circle to new people. If you've been blessed, if you've been touched, if you've been changed, if you've been impacted by what you've experienced at any time, where you have watched these telecasts, would you consider being a covenant partner? What is that? It is the gift, whether it be 50 a month, 75 a month, 100, or whatever it may be that you choose, that you would support this telecast on a monthly basis. Maybe you're not there, but you say, you know what, I would like to be a one-time giver. It doesn't matter what category you fall into. For your first gift of any amount, we're gonna send this gift to you to say thank you because we appreciate so much. We know you have many, many options, many, many uh, wonderful people providing many wonderful services in the world. And if you've chosen to give here, we're so honored and we're so grateful. May God bless the seed that you sow and cause it to multiply 30, 60, and 100 fold back into your life. What a great day we live in and thank you for helping make this possible. Now, let's get back. To where did you lose it? Matthew 10, 41 and 42. He who receives, say receive. Okay. You are received like you are perceived. Let me get back to that. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. In other words, he who receives a prophet and sees him correctly shall receive a prophet's reward. <laughs> if I see this person as a prophet of God, then I receive them as a prophet of God I will get from them what God sent through them for me to have. I know y'all want me to scream, but I got to settle down and make sure you're getting these things. These are powerful principles. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives these little ones a cup of cold water in my name, uh, cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. In other words, Jesus lays out a principle. He says, if you see them right and you receive them right, then you will get from them what I put in them for you to receive. I have no ability to help you if you have no honor for me. If you sit at the table and your whole family, that Ron Carpenter, he ain't nothing but a just love. Okay, nobody from your family is going to ever be able to benefit from the anointing on my life. Is it because I deserve honor? Absolutely not. I don't deserve anything. But God has put stuff in me and God has put stuff on me and it's not for me, it's to benefit you. So now he places the burden on you to see me correctly and to receive me correctly so that what he's put on me may benefit your life and your household in a positive way. You can't benefit from anyone you disrespect. Honor has to be the culture. That activates the kingdom. Look at about people behind you, in front of him, beside him, and say, I don't know, but he's, he seems like he's talking straight to you. Just, I, I think he's talking to you. Look, come on, say it. I think, I think he's talking to you right now. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. I'm going back to Malachi. I'm putting all, all this is in the middle. I'm, Malachi is where I'm going to land. <clears throat> Then Jesus went out from there and came to his own country. His disciples followed him. <clears throat> when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. 
and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this in which has been given to him that such are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? the son of Mary, the brother of James, Hoseas, Judas, and Simon? And are these not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his relatives, and in his own house. He could do no mighty work there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled at their unbelief. Then he went about to the villages in a circuit preaching. He went in there and he got out. Now, what is happening here? I have always said that if there was ever a time I wanted to score a touchdown, it was in front of my home crowd. If there's ever time I wanted to be the high scorer, I wanted to be with my dad and my mom sitting in the stands. <clears throat> if there's ever time I wanted to knock one out of the ballpark, it was when my family had come to the game and we were watching and we were all going to go grill out afterwards. At no time did I want to do it more than I did with my home crowd. Okay? I do not think Jesus had any selfish ambition in him but I do believe he had great love for his earthly family and earthly relatives. And I'm sure that he, just like he cleaned out hospitals in every other town, he would that and all the more like to bring that same anointing and that same miracle working power to people that he knew that grew up with, that he grew up with and that had made an investment in his life. The only problem was it was not the place of honor it was the only place he did not have honor. When I go in to speak at other churches, let me tell you what I get the microphone and do. I don't get the microphone and start selling stuff. I don't get the microphone and tell them about my book or tell them about the vault. I don't get it and just start preaching. I stop because most of the time they stand up and they clap. And if I've been there before and if they enjoyed it, sometimes they clap loud. If they didn't enjoy it, sometimes they don't clap much at all. But they stand up and they honor me. And I take the mic and I say, remain standing, please. And when I look at him and say, remain standing, why do I say that? I say, remain standing. I said, because I've never understood why the guy who's going to come and leave gets a standing ovation. In other words, gets honor. But the people sitting on the front row who come to stay and they've been here 10 years, they've been here 20 years, they've been here 30 years, they're going to be there to answer the phone, they're going to be in the office, they're going to be grinding it out, they're going to be filling out the organizational flow chart, they're going to be studying messages, there's going to be discipline, they're going to be at the hospital, they're going to be there to pastor you, they're going to pray with you at the altar. The guy who came to stay never gets a clap. But the guy who comes and goes gets one. That was what Jesus was ha had happening to him in his hometown. The towns that had no point of reference with him, he was Messiah and Messiah only. But when he went back to his hometown, he was Messiah, but he was also Jesus, the carpenter's son. And so now the people have a dilemma. They get to choose, what will I draw out of him? Will I draw his humanity out of him, or will I draw his deity out of him? And Jesus began to flow in might and wonder and in words of wisdom, and they were offended, saying, who does he think he is? Is this not Mary's boy? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not James and Hoseas and, and, and all the rest? Is this not their brother and John? Is this not their brother? And they were offended at him, offended because... Because they knew him in his humanity that he would try to operate in anything else. It is amazing to me how the very people that we need support from will not give it to you because they know too much about you. And you can walk in any place and tell them, say, I'm going to do this one day. And they'll encourage you, but you can go back home. 
and you can sit among relatives amongst people who knew you. When I went back to my high school friends from college and announced to them that I had given my heart to Jesus and I was going into full-time ministry, the laughter and the mockery that broke out broke my heart. Why? Because they knew everything about my humanity. They never could see me walking with the gift of God on my life. And to this day, I have no ability to bless them, and I've never had any ability to bless them because I I'm still high school run, but they never saw the anointed man of God that God raised me up and put something in me that could change people's lives. They don't see that, so I don't have the ability to bless them. I'm asking you right now, who is God sending you that you have not honored? Is there people in your house that you've not honored? Is there a great David that is out there with the sheep that's being disrespected, but he's got the oil of God on his life? Who is it in your house that God wants to favor, but they did everything? Thing and you know all their story. I don't know, but there's somebody in your house. There's somebody in your circle. And don't let your disrespect rob you of the opportunity to draw a miracle out of them. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet gets a prophet's reward. Somebody lift your hands for 15 seconds and shout hallelujah. Oh, I want to be an honoring church. Shout hallelujah. I want to be a church with a culture of honor. Somebody say amen. And when the angel saw the shepherd, they said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all men. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord, a Savior. I bring you good tidings of great joy, good news. You're depressed, I got good news. You're broke, poverty-stricken, I got good news. You're alone, lonely, I got good news. You're addicted, I got good news. You're depressed, I got good news. You're anxiety-filled, I got good news. Whatever's happening, I got good news. The news is a name. In Jesus has found the answer to all of life's problems and is the one that can quench the soul. Nothing else on earth can do it, but Jesus can. I want you to invite him into your heart and life. Lord Jesus, would you come now into our heart? Would you come to be our Lord and Savior? I ask you to forgive us of our sins as we put our faith in you and confess that you died and rose again to purchase our salvation. Come live in our heart. Be our Lord and Savior from this moment forward, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to know because it is the greatest prayer you'll ever pray and the biggest decision you'll ever make. Write in, call in, do what you got to do, email, but we got to know if you made that decision. Thank you so much for giving us this time in your life. I hope it blessed you. And until next week, we'll see you soon. But you are the salt of the earth, a city set on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. When you forget about trying to change everybody else, and you say, I'm going to take the word and I'm going to change my world, then your world lights up. Then when you get around everybody else and they're depressed and you're full of joy, you stick out. What's going on in front of your eyes may seem small, but God has a much bigger plan in store. In this next chapter of On Assignment, Ron Carpenter will help you discover how to see God's true plan for your life. The blessing is not on him, the blessing is on you. And if you will obey, then I'll put this thing on you, and everywhere you go, you will carry it. You will walk in with it. Every room, everybody will recognize it. Blessed shall you be. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.